So first up, our first speaker is, uh, first up we have Simon Watt. Uh, Simon Watt is a biologist, science presenter, and president of the Ugly Animal Preservation Society. <laughs> quite right, quite right. We all, we all need some love. Uh, <laughs> you can find him trying to redesign our species on his comedy science podcast, Level Up Human. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Mr. Simon Watts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we tend to think of evolution as being a slow process, something that takes millions of years, but that is simply not always true. Evolution can be rapid under the right circumstances, and I believe that I have observed a new sea creature at the start of a speciation event. In Paris's poshest restaurant, in an enormous fish tank, in a novelty toy castle, there lives the ugly lobster. The ugly lobster is the smallest, weediest, ugliest lobster in the world. It is spotty and cross-eyed, its tail is wonky, its claws don't match, its antenna are limp. It may have all the features that make up a face, but not one of them is in quite the right place. <laughs> How did the merciless rigors of evolution create such a pathetic creature? The answer to this peculiar mystery lies in the lobster's home, its habitat. The ugly lobster lives in its fish tank with its close relative, the uh, common lobster, and a solitary sea snail called Pierre. <laughs> the common lobster, um, well, you know, these lobsters, they get by quite fine. They have no difficulty in finding food. They're fed by kitchen staff. Previous studies have found that in the wild, lobsters are hunted and eaten by predators and some kinds of fish, squid and the like. In this environment, the fish tank... <clears throat> In the environment of the fish tank, the lobster is only one predator, humans. Homo sapiens who can afford to spend euros, uh, 70 euros, that's roughly 70 pounds post-Brexit vote, <laughs> on lobsters served on a very large plate with creamy mashed potatoes and flavoured with spring onions. The key here is that this restaurant is posh, and I don't mean like Vianetta posh, okay? <laughs> I mean like you know, hat as part of your school uniform, posh. I mean, tax avoidance posh, you know? <laughs> the kind of posh that can actually afford to go to university, yes? <laughs> now, one of the things that makes this restaurant posh, you see, other than aloof waiters and small meals and big plates, is that rich people get to choose what dies. It's like a conservative government. <laughs> Diners get to choose which lobsters they eat. And because they're paying too much, they're looking for the biggest, juiciest lobster that they can spot. Fussy patrons in these restaurants are very picky about what they eat, and so only ever select the healthiest-looking lobsters, meaning that they overlook those that are a bit diseased, unhealthy, or simply a bit wrong. They now outlive these buff lobsters. The ugly lobster had come into existence. It is now so small that the ugly lobster can hide inside the novelty toy castle, meaning that its safety is nearly guaranteed. Even Pierre the sea snail is not safe. After all, this tank is in France. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is imperative that we, we stop this disgusting lobster. And you might ask, why does it matter? Am I really suggesting that we cull lobsters because of their looks? Do we really want to police the species, to remove individuals just because of fickle fashion and changing looks? No, we are not sugar babes. <laughs> we, we are not pussycat dolls. <laughs> but by continuing to eat lobsters for their meat, we find that we're removing those with the largest tails and claws, leaving behind those that are mostly head and brain. <laughs> Without selection and beauty, they are likely evolving to be smarter. After all, they've already discovered that they can hole up inside a castle. <laughs> Trevishes are the next logical step. <laughs> Observational evidence suggests <laughs> that the more aesthetically challenged tend to be smarter. Several scholars like Jeeves have gone so far <laughs> as to suggest that there may even be a theoretical framework by whereby beauty is inversely proportional to intelligence, hence physicists. <laughs> no, we, 
we should be afraid. They have got nipple clamps for hands. The, the, the lobsters, not the physicists. <laughs> Furthermore, according to some recent research <laughs> reported by an esteemed scientist in an esteemed periodical, or misquoted, the sun uh, lobsters, they are immortal, meaning that they will likely be hard to kill and might even be good with swords. We, we could be facing an intelligent, deadly, and fugly foe. We must drive them into extinction before it is too late. We will fight them on the beaches. <laughs> that's, that's likely as far as we'll get. That's, uh... <laughs> Brothers and sisters, it is essential that we fight back before they organize. I would recommend a lemon and garlic sauce. <laughs> Thank you.